the Cowboy Turtles Association. How did the turtles deal come in here? I thought they was riding horses, you know. That. Well, I hope I get this right. Uh, I think it was just kind of a motto. They were quick uh, to stick their necks out, but slow to get anything done. So they kind of uh, brought that on board as a, as a tagline and a motto. <laughs> That's all right. One of the stories I heard about the turtles was that uh, they were so slow to organize. That's the reason they uh, called them turtles before the RCA started. Yeah, and if you have a turtle's button from back then, it's worth a fortune right now. <laughs> and I didn't keep mine. <laughs> hey, Don. Yes. You perform at the 1940 and 41 and 48 stock shows, right? Yes. I performed in 40 and 41 down at the old stockyards, and I performed up here in 1948. So, uh, so what, was, what do you remember about, because you were what, four? I was four and uh, 11. Four, uh, three, no, four, five, and 11. So do you remember anything about the 1940? Uh, only that it was colder than hell. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, I, I, I have a... I have a page from the Fort Worth Star-Telegram with uh, the act that I did uh, in 1940-41. I'll bring it tomorrow. I'll show it to you. What about 48? 48, uh, I was trick riding and trick roping, or Roman riding. I didn't trick rope any. Uh, just the Roman riding and the trick riding. I don't know whether it was the first year. It was the first year I was here up on the top, but I remember, I mean, my first two performances were down at, uh, at the stockyards. But even then, 1948, when we come up here, it was cold too. I do remember that much. And I worked with Dick Farnsworth and uh, Ben Johnson, all those fellows before they ever became in the movies because I knew them from 1944 on until uh, I think Ben Johnson made the movie uh, she wore a yellow ribbon in the late 40s and uh, we had already been rodeoing for a couple of years with him and then Dick Fondworth through him got involved in stunt work and then wound up being an actor too so uh, I knew both of them from the time I was seven eight years old Yes, sir. I didn't teach Chill a voice. He taught me. You know, uh, I first met Old Chill when we was doing a, they was doing a rodeo. I was up in a place called Pendleton, Oregon, and they were shooting a movie up there called Bronc Busters. That was in 1952, and uh, I was lucky enough to be one of the cowboys that Bud Bettiger picked to work in the movie and uh, double some of the guys. I think I doubled four or five guys there. Uh, you know, we get paid. I just stand in line, man. You get paid for doing it. When you rodeo and you only get paid if you win. But when you're doubling somebody, you get money. So I kind of got that shot in the arm like heroin about the motion picture business. And then that's when I went down to uh, Hollywood and uh, I met Chill Chill. I met down there and he became friends. And then when we worked on Giant, uh, my main job was working with Rock Hudson and James Dean, Mercedes McCambridge, um, Dennis Hopper, and Carol Baker. They didn't want Elizabeth Taylor using a, a uh, Texas accent. So um, I worked with them on that, and they were really easy to work with. And I was only seven and a half months. I've got a little chill wheels tale happened to me in the 70s, early 70s. I was at Las Vegas, uh, Nevada at the... At Benny's place. Uh, well, that's Benny's place, but I was out there at the Tropicana uh, at the World Championship Finals for the National Cut Horse Association, and I was the last person to leave. I stayed out the night before, I guess too late or whatever, and I was just getting ready to hook up an old Buick or something like that to my inline trailer. 
and come home and uh, here come a big old limousine or a Cadillac or a Packard or some darn big old car and it was uh, uh, old, uh, we just talked about uh, it. Till, till wheels and it was uh, got on the golden nugget, my mind's a blank, I can't even think. Uh, not the golden nugget, but the horseshoe club. Uh, Benny, Benny, it was Benny. Benny. And I knew Benny, but knew Benny for several years before that. And he came up and he had Chill Wills and Andy Devine and two or three other old Western cowboy movie stars with them. And they'd been out partying all night long, I think. And they was just, oh, this has been probably 70, 68, 69. Maybe he was there, but you might even remember this. But anyway, uh, uh, oh, uh, Hell, my mind's blank. Uh, no, no, uh, Benny, 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 yeah. He uh, said, Pat said, I want, uh, these guys want to ride a cutting horse. And said, everybody's left. And I said, well, uh, uh, and I was the only one there. And they, they said, we don't, they don't want to cut on it. They just want to get on it and sit on it and say, they get the picture taken. And I said, well, you sure have this mare. And uh, I was riding a mare called Nicky Mac, had her in the top 10 that year. And, so uh, Chill Wheels, he just stepped up on her. And this little mare wouldn't weigh uh, over 950 pounds. And then it come time to get Andy Devine on that little bitty mare. And we had ropes all, <laughs> and on one side and trying to get him on and finally got him on. I, and he weighed more than the mare did. But anyway, that's my, <laughs> my little story. Oh, yeah. Now, Bob, you did some rodeoing too, didn't you? Yeah, and you talking about cutting horse. I had an uncle that had a cutting horse called Skeeter. Do you know Phil Williams? I knew Phil Williams. He was my hero when I was just yeah. 16, 18 years old. Yeah, well, he started me roping calves. He used to be a calf roper, and he yeah. got arthritis and couldn't get his hand up here, so he started, old Fern Sawyer talked him into starting cutting horses. He had two world champions, Skeeter and Little Tom W. I was born out there in Tokyo, the same place he's from. He talked a lot, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> Mm hmm yeah. I remember old Chill Will said, the first time I saw old Phil riding old Skeeter, he said, he, you know, Phil had feet nearly as big as mine. He said, looked like shavs stuck in those stirrups out there <laughs> off of a buggy. Yeah. Now, you're talking about Bill Williams? Phil Williams. Uh, Bill Williams? Bill Williams was a, was a, was a actor. Kid Carson. Huh? I worked with Bill Williams also, and Phil Williams was my uncle. He was a cutting horse man. Oh, he was? Yeah, he had world champion, two of them. One called Skeeter, one two times with him, and one time with a little horse called Little Tom W. I got a question for Don. So, uh, so Don is the cowboy that you were talking about before the Chill Wheels and Skeeter. Well, he was a great guy. Uh, you know, he... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think who he married, Betty, uh, uh, Barbara Hale, Barbara Hale, yeah, Perry, Ma yeah, Perry Mason. But anyway, he was just a great guy to work with. Uh, I only worked with him that one time, but I worked with another Bill Williams. We went to, uh, stuntman. yeah, the stuntman, yeah. Bill Williams, uh, went to Brussels, Belgium with him for the 1958 World's Fair. And he comes home and he works in about two or three movies in, and in, in uh, Paint Your Wagon, I believe, no. Uh, when he got killed. Yeah, when he got killed. He got killed in a uh, movie accident. He was supposed to jump out of the wagon before it goes over the cliff and he didn't make it out. He slipped, his feet slipped out from under him and he went to the bottom with the wagon and killed him. And I uh, forget the name of that movie. I uh, know it. It was something about the Indian. He was dressed like an Indian, and they had a bunch of whiskey, and the whiskey got into the swamps, and it would, uh, every once in a while, it would rise back up. The barrels would. Hallelujah Trail. Hallelujah Trail. That's what that's it was. It. That's the one he got killed on shortly after we'd come.